Hi and welcome to tutorial 92 and this is similar to tutorial 91 but I was asked by a Gold Pass member to modify the program so that rather than just not showing the latest pivot value high or low pivot to show the last X number of pivots so in this particular case you'll see uh, applied to the in this case the multi-chart scanner we're showing the last five high pivots or low pivots what we're going to do in this tutorial we're just going to be working on the high pivot side but if you are interested in downloading the program then I will include the low pivot calculations with it the program can also run on a chart so if we were to go over to a pound dollar you'll see uh, I've got the tutorial 91 program applied to the chart here showing the red and blue lines but underneath you can see the values of the last several pivots and these are in chronological order so for example uh, this 55652 if we were to go to the last high pivot there you'll see the high value is 155652 the one previous to that is one five six zero one seven and uh, and so on and so forth i'm also going to include in the program the option that rather than listing the high pivots in a chronological order i'm also going to sort them by size and that will be uh, that will be determined by a user input okay so clearly i've already written the program what i'm going to do is delete what I've written and start from scratch so we can go through the program creation from the beginning. Okay, so here we have the program and there's nothing there essentially at the moment apart from some comments. So let's create some inputs and incidentally, I'm not gonna be adding too many comments to this particular program, but the one that is available for download does include a lot of comments. So we're going to create uh, an input, which is going to be the number of pivots that we're looking for. Set that to three by default. And need to tell the program how many left and right bars we want for our pivots. So I'm going to make that an input as well. I'm going to call it left bars and right bars. like so and we're going to be doing some coloring as well but I'm just going to leave those out at the moment just to try and keep this fairly simple to start with so in terms of variables we're going to be using the pivot function so we need to declare some variables for that and let's say o pivot price h and also the O pivot bar H like so. I'm going to be using a counter. I'm going to be using a couple of counters, but let's just declare that right here. We're going to be using some arrays as well, incidentally, to do this. They're other ways of, of doing this but uh, I think to make this work on both multi charts and on trade station I think arrays are probably the best way to go we're going to be using a string now you probably noticed that I'd got all the pivots in one column in the uh, scanner in the multi chart scanner and the reason for that is that as far as I know, there's still no way of programmatically changing the number of plots. So rather than having each one in its own column, uh, what I've done is created one column. And I do that by creating a string where I store the values as, uh, as text. I'm going to be using another counter. And these will all become clear, I hope, as we go through. I'm going to be using another string just called txt. And we're going to use this to determine how many decimal places we're going to need for the particular instrument we're looking at so for example for a pound dollar you'd need five but for a stock you'd need two most likely I'm going to store that in 
variable called deck places. Okay, and let's create our array. I'm going to store double values. I'm going to call it high pivots. And we don't know how big it is to start with because we're going to define that by the user input number of uh, pivots. So we're going to set it as a dynamic array, initial values of zero. And we'll be creating another array as we go along to help us do the sort, but uh, let's just not do that at the moment. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the size of the array. So we're going to say array set max size. And the name of the array is high pivots. And the size we're going to set it to is this input here, number of pivots. Going to type that in, copy and paste that in there. Okay, so that is the array set uh, size set. The next thing we're going to do is calculate the number of decimal places that we need. Now we only need to do this once at the beginning of the program. And uh, you remember we just declared a string txt. So I'm going to say txt equals num to string num to string of the frac portion of min move divided by price scale to five decimal places now you might not necessarily understand this bit, but if you if you're interested, you could put some print statements in and see the various calculations I'm doing here, and hopefully it will become clear. But this is not really the main part of the uh, the program, so I'm just going to slightly gloss gloss over this. But uh, as I say, you can use print statements yourself to get a deeper understanding of what I'm doing here. But having created that string, we're now going to look at the rightmost element of it. And if that is not equal to zero, then we know that we need five decimal places. So we're going to set five decimal places equals five, like so. However, if it is equal to zero, so let me just uh, copy this. In fact, I'm going to copy it a few times because we're going to use very similar syntax. So I'm going to say if it is equal to Oh, and incidentally, this is actually a string rather than a number. So we need to put that in quotes. If it is equal to the string zero, then we know we need four decimal places, or at least at this point we do. That's going to be overwritten as we go through this little routine. Okay, if right string two, the two, the two most... Um, rightmost digits equals zero zero then I'm going to set decimal places to three and if the right string the three most right text elements equals zero 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 as a string then at decimal places is going to be two. So in actual fact, what would probably happen for a, or what would happen for something like, say Amazon, uh, you would calculate and say the right string is equal to zero, the decimal place of four, that would then be overwritten because the two most, uh, rightmost uh, text characters would be zero, zero, so it'd be three, and then finally it would be overwritten with decimal places is equal to two. Anyway, I don't want to labor that too much because what we want what we want to do now is look for the pivot so we're going to use the pivot function and probably noticed I've got that included at the top here with the uh, in the comments so I'm just going to copy this just 
to save a little bit of typing. And we're going to change the prices to what we need. So we're looking for the high pivots in the highs. And we only want to find the most recent one. We don't want to look back several bars and know that there were several several bars ago. So we're going to set right bars plus one. Left bars. Right bars. They're user inputs, as you probably remember. We want the most recent instance. That's going to be one. We want it to be a high pivot. And we want to return the values into O price H and O sorry, O pivot price H and O pivot bar H, like so. Okay, now this actually returns three values. It returns the value into value one. It also returns O pivot price H and O pivot bar H. So we know that if value one is equal to one, then we just had a high pivot confirmed. So let's begin. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to store the value in our high pivots array. And this array, we're going to continually loop around the array using a counter. And that counter is H array CTR, which we declared earlier. And that's going to be equal to this value here, O pivot price H. So I'm just going to copy that like so. And going to set the high string. I'm going to reset the high string if we've already set it previously to an empty string. Semicolon. And then we're going to go high string is equal to num to string of this value that we've just found, which is O pivot price H. And going to do that to the number of decimal places that we just calculated. So that is the initial value stored in there. But clearly, we now want to go through and add the values that have previously been put in the array. So we're going to need another counter. And we're going to set that to start with as being counter CTR equals H array counter minus one. Now, of course, if the uh, H array counter was zero, because we, as I say, we're looping around, this would give us a value of minus one. So we need to put in, say, if CTR equals minus one, then CTR equals number pivots. Again, this is the user input which determines how many pivots. Minus one. Okay, and I'm going to use a little while loop now to go through the array and add all the other text to this string. So we're going to say while CTR is not equal to HRA counter, which is the, uh, the value in the loop where we just stored the most recent value. Begin. I'm going to say high string is equal to high string plus, I'm going to put in a space, plus num to string, uh, the value stored in the array for this particular counter value, which is square brackets CTR to the decimal places that we calculated earlier. Having done that, we now need to reduce the counter equal CTR minus one. And again, we need to just say if CTR equals minus one, then CTR equals just like we've done up here. like so, and then we need to end our little while loop, like so. Okay, having done that, we need to get our H array counter ready for the next 
high pivot that we're going to find. So we're going to increment that. So we're going to say h array counter equals h array counter plus one. However, if that calculates that h array counter is equal to number of pivots, then we need to go back to zero. And uh, the reason for that is that we're using the array, we're storing things in the, the zero element. So we don't want to store things in the non pivots uh, element because there isn't one effectively because we're storing them in zero, one, two, three, however many up to number of pivots minus one. Okay, good. So that is when we find a high pivot. So I'm just going to close that begin end. And what we can now do is create our plot statement. Okay, so we're going to go plot one. And we're going to plot the high string that we've just calculated. We're going to give it a name. Like so. And we're going to give it a color. And I mentioned earlier we were going to set the colors. So let's do that now. I'm just going to say high color and just going to create a new input called high color it's actually an int integer which seems strange but uh, that's the way it works because this color is a representation of an integer number okay so let's compile this i've got the uh, toolbar here i'm going to compile see if we've made any errors and we we have so let's just have a look at those so you see here we misspelled counter so i'm just going to try again you see how i said array set max size should actually be set max index so apologies for that okay it's going to compile again okay misspelled right there there's actually a t on it so i need to do that for all the other Okay, so let's try it again. We press F3 this time. So we're not compiling now because this is already applied to uh, a chart and, and the scanner. So what I'm going to do is remove them from the chart and the scanner. Okay, so what I did, I, I actually removed the previous version from scanner and the chart and closed both the multi-charts version, the scanner and the chart, and also the power language editor and then I re, uh, reopened multi charts and applied the new version of the program and you can see here that uh, we've got three highs being displayed and uh, if we were to go to the chart where I've also applied the new version you'll see here that these values uh, 55652 which would correspond to this number here and the next one would correspond to this pivot here one five six zero oh, seven zero oh, one seven. You can see, and then the uh, the next one would correspond to five five six five four. Okay, so what I think I'm going to do is, rather than continue this video, I'm going to create another video which will show you how you can uh, enhance this program to be able to sort the values. In other words, at the moment the values are being displayed in the most recent, the most recent before that, and the most recent before that, what you might wish to do is sort them by size, and I'll show you a way of doing that. So thank you very much.